Hi, Max Sheldon here. Welcome back to the shop. In this video, we're going to build a set of Krenoff style sawhorses using the panda router in a variety of different ways. We'll make the drawboard mortise and tenon that connects the vertical piece to the bottom or foot pieces. Then we'll join the stretcher using a mortise and tenon with our diamond and bow tie shaped mortise and tenon templates. And just for fun, we'll make some decorative uh, plugs or, or dowels for each one. And with the diamond, we're going to wedge it for some additional strength. We'll cut the bridles at the top using a really handy method that's fully adjustable for a perfect fit. We started with some pretty poor oak from our lumber rack that was cut back in the 1970s. It's a mixed bag of fair to barely okay red and white oak, and none of this would be suitable for furniture but it's dry and pretty stable and we didn't have to go shopping, so it's just dandy for sawhorses. So let's get started. Before we cut the mortises in the bottom or foot pieces, we'll bore the holes for our drawboard dowels. We made the holes 3 8 inch diameter and later we'll make the dowels to fit the holes perfectly. The 3 8 inch holes are routed out in a couple of minutes and no measuring is required. We just set the center using the thickness gauge on the panda router and the center line on the table. The lever clamps are rock solid using the bridge method. The tenons are equally fast and easy and we nailed the fit on the first try. We made one sawhorse using our new bow tie template and one using the diamond template for stretchers. Both are strong and add a little flavor to the project. All of our templates are easy to center by placing the shaft of one of the guide bearings through the center hole of the template and into the index hole in the template holder. Draw boring required an ever so slightly offset hole to be bored in the tenon piece. Since this operation is critical, we chucked up the pointed jig that comes with the panda router to pinpoint the location, then horizontally bored quickly and easily. Just to compare this operation to the traditional method at the drill press, we drilled two of them. We had set up and bored both of the ones that we did on the panda router in half the time it took just for the setup of the first one on the drill press. Next, we set up to make the diamond and bow tie tenons, starting with finding the center of the workpiece, then setting the depth of cut. We used a double thickness of copy paper to make the tenon slightly proud of the through mortise and tenon. Still probably a hair tight. These special shapes have the same patented taper on the outside to make them fully adjustable. And since these shapes are always going to be through mortise and tenon, a precise fit is critical. It takes only a minute or two to dial in the perfect fit, then dozens of the same shape and size can be cut in just a few minutes. Just for fun, we're going to add a decorative contrasting colored dowel to the center of the tenon. Without moving the template, we simply inserted our guide bearing into the center hole then plunged into the end of the tenon with a 3 8 inch spiral upcut bit. Next we found some scraps of walnut and made a bunch of 3 8 inch dowels. Our dowel template also has the taper so we can adjust the fit to perfection. We cut them three at a time and we made this set extra long. Once the dowels were glued in, we set the side piece up on the panda router table again to cut the slot for the wedge. Freeing the guide bearing from the template allowed us to trim the excess length of the dowel. 
Without moving the template holder, we mounted a big mortise and tenon template to cut the 8th inch slot for the wedges. The bow tie tenons are just as easy and once we had them both cut, we played around with embellishing them. We removed one mounting screw at a time and used the screw hole to locate the guide bearing, then plunged straight in to put a decorative dowel hole in the middle of each lobe of the bow tie. The positioning ribs on the back of the template hold it in place along with the screw on the other side. The bridle joint for the top rail was super fast and easy to cut using two of our vertical mortise and tenon templates. Test until you dial in the fit that you're looking for, then cut full depth on all of your pieces. This is the only time we adjust what is effectively a mortise to the tenon or the thickness of the top piece. We made a 3 inch long cut in the center using the bandsaw, then horizontally bored all of the side pieces from each direction using a quarter inch bit. A pecking motion yields the best results when boring like this. The objective is to insert a bolt and washer then use a cam on the other side to squeeze the top rail to keep it secure. You could screw, glue, or dowel it in place, but this arrangement allows you to adjust the rail for an out of square floor or slightly raise it for some other reason. Our three quarter inch bits have no cutting flutes in the center, so they can't be used to bore straight in without a relief cut. We chucked up a half inch bit to bore out the center, then finished the job with the big three quarter inch bit. We made a pattern jig for the base piece and this time we cut very little wood away in order to keep some weight down low. The bandsaw makes quick work of the shaping, then a pass on the belt sander and another on the drum sander and we're ready to glue it all up. When we glue the mortise and tenon, it helps to control squeeze out if we stop pushing the two pieces together about a half inch before they seat, then remove most of the excess glue. Seems good to have a bit of squeeze out, but not too much. Once the mortise and tenon are glued, we pounded in the drawbore pin. Clamps in place, we checked to make sure everything was still nice and square, then glued in the decorative dowels and the bow ties and wedged the diamond. Hand plane and lots of sanding to 220 prepared these for the tongue oil finish. Use your imagination and we'd love to see how you incorporate these new templates in your own work.
We're often asked for suggestions to support longer work pieces on the Panda Router table, and we generally recommend whatever method you use in your shop to support pieces on the drill press or maybe a chop saw. Since we built these sawhorses, there's one more little add-on that we can make that's quick and easy, and we get to use the Panda Router, so what's not to like? We're going to make this extension piece that's sized to be level with the Panda Router table, and since there's just a couple of mortise and tenons, it couldn't be easier. We measure the height it needs to be, then struck a line for the length of the tenon. This is a little sneak peek at a new template system we have coming out at the end of September 2020. We used a mold trial sample for this project and it worked perfectly. This new template set is optimized for 3 8 inch mortise and tenon with widths in quarter inch increments from 1 inch to 5 inches. We have two sets of rounded end pieces that make either a one inch or inch and a quarter width. Then you can add any number of segments to make a mortise and tenon as long as you want. In this case, I wanted one and three quarter inch wide, so I used the inch and a quarter end set with a half inch segment in the center. And as you can see, the result was deadly accurate. That's really all there is to this add-on. It only took a few minutes and I think it'll be really handy. If you'd like to build a set of these Kredoff style sawhorses for your own shop, we have a plan posted in the Panto Project section on our website at www.pantorouter.com. Thanks again for joining us and happy panto routing!